Hi, my name is Mark Galley, and in this example, we're going to use the Hubble Space Telescope to explain why it's important to focus on solutions, not the problem or the cause or the main thing. Uh, you can really find the best solutions by, by understanding how to control the causes of a, of a particular issue. Now, the, the basic parts of investigating any issue are clearly defining the problem, conducting the analysis, which means to break down into parts, and then identifying specific solutions. People normally disagree about what they see as the problem. Um, you're going to capture information about the timing that goes in the when, and you're going to capture where it happened. To get agreement when defining an issue, because people see the problem differently, you always define an issue by the impact to the organization's overall goals. These goals capture the deviation from the ideal state, that those deviations from the ideal state is really where the analysis begins. You start with these bad things that have impacted the goals, and you ask why questions moving to the right. So it's just like five whys. You ask why questions moving to the right across the page because we, we read left to right. So this cosmap builds backwards. As you add more detail, it breaks the cosmap down into, into more parts, and you can provide evidence directly in that analysis step. Once you have the causes uh, captured in the analysis step, you can identify different ways you could solve the problem, which are called possible solutions, and those can go directly on the cause that they control. And from there, you can pick the best ones, the ones that are the most effective, and those would go into an action plan with a specific owner and a due date and the, the cause that it controls. Now, here's how this looks for the, for the Hubble. So in step one, we write the problem outline. When we're really defining an issue, we ask people what the problem is, and some people say the, the telescope is out of focus, and some people say there's a flaw in the mirror. This happened back in 1990. What was different when this happened was we didn't verify the mirror before we put it in space and there were delays related to manufacturing and also during the loss of the, the Challenger. Um, where this happened, the telescope is in low Earth orbit, but the specific component on the Hubble Space Telescope is the primary mirror. That's the component that has, that has the flaw. The task that was being performed, the error happened during manufacturing, but they found it during orbit testing. And then under the goals, the ideal state is to answer none to all of these. But because we have an issue, at least one or more is going to be impacted. In this particular case on the Hubble, no one was injured. Uh, the the impact of the mission was really a potential loss of the overall mission objectives because of the blurred images on a 1.5 billion dollar telescope. Certainly a quality uh, goal, the quality goals are impacted because there's a, a defective component. The primary mirror is too flat at the outer edges and there's certainly going to be cost in terms of material labor for this repair which there was on the first servicing mission of this 1.5 billion dollar tel telescope. Understanding the impact of the goals provides us the beginning of the analysis step. So the, the mission goal is impacted because there's potential loss of the overall mission objectives because the Hubble images are blurred, and the Hubble images are blurred because of the flaw in the primary mirror. And this is what a lot of people focus on as the problem. They found the component that is bad, they found the failure, and that's the cause. But you can ask more why questions. The flaw is because of the error in the device used to shape the mirror, and the error in the device is because it was assembled incorrectly. Even between these cause and effect relationships, you can add more detail. So the Hubble images are blurred because of the flaw in the mirror, but specifically you could say the images are blurred because the light entering the instruments on the Hubble is off spec. It's not in focus. And it's not in focus because of the error in the mirror. So between any cause and effect relationship, you can zoom in and add more detail. Even to the right, you could say the flaw in the mirror is because of the error in the device, the fact that we relied on a single device to verify the mirror, and the fact that we didn't find the flaw prior to deployment. So when you're building a future telescope, you'd want to understand these causes to not have it happen again. If you look at this, this cause that says Hubble image is blurred and ask why it happens, it's definitely because the light is out of focus. The light entering the instruments is off spec, and the instruments are on spec meaning for the images on the Hubble to be blurred, the light has to be out of focus or off spec, and the instruments have to be on spec. Now, people look at this and say, well, isn't the air that the, the mirror is flawed and that causes the light to be out of focus? That is. That's definitely a problem and an air and a bad thing. But for the images to be blurred, the light must be off spec and the instruments must be on spec. They're both required for the images to be blurred. If both of those are required, meaning they're both causes, then you can potentially control either one. And the reason we have this as an example in this, this short video is because on the Hubble in 1993, they fixed the instruments to match the bad mirror. So the change was not to the mirror, the change was to the instruments that were originally made correctly. 
Um, they changed the instruments to match the flawed mirror, and that's how it's operated since 1993, and the images are not blurry. By focusing on the problem, you miss a set of solutions that work very well, because it's not really about the problem, it's about the goals. You should always start with the overall goals of the organization and back into causes to find the best solutions. The, the lesson here is don't limit your solutions within your organization by just focusing on the problem or the cause as a single thing. Understand the causes. The best solutions may control a cause that's not even considered a problem. Now, in this Hubble example, there was a thorough investigation. It was part of the, what was called the Allen Commission, and there's a much more detailed cause map that we've made. We've got specific evidence on there in the magenta boxes. We've got the impact of the goals for the mission and the, also the, the quality uh, defect. And then the specific solutions are in the green boxes, and it lays out quite a bit more detail about about the null corrector and it gives a schematic of the Hubble and the specific error in the device. It's a lot more information and this, this information is on our website about the Hubble in more detail. Really in, in summary, small issues or big issues, you should always focus on the cause and effect principle. Start the analysis with the impact of the goals, meaning you're defining the problem by the deviation from the ideal state. You then identify the causes of that deviation, which causes are plural. When you get to the solution step, you can consider alternatives. These are the options or ideas, the possible solutions, the different ways you could solve the problem. And then you prioritize the different ways you could solve the problem to pick the best ones. An error that we see in organizations frequently is they try to prioritize the causes. They try to find the important causes and then ignore the not so important causes. But by definition, anything that is causally related is required to produce the incident meaning there aren't more important causes and less important causes, the differentiation should always be on the solutions. Some solutions are more effective than others, and that, that Hubble example illustrates that point. You select the best solutions to meet the overall goals. And this idea of trying to label the problem or the cause really does limit your solutions. Now, if you'd like to learn more about our cause mapping methodology for problem solving, incident investigation, root cause analysis, we conduct public workshops around the United States in various cities, and those workshops are listed on our website at thinkreliability.com or causemapping.com. We also do client workshops on site that are customized for the client, and we lead specific investigations. A client might bring us in and have us help them on a particular issue the first time, or take them all the way through the investigation, all the way through solutions and the documentation and, and implementation. If you'd like to send us our email, you can send an email to info at thinkreliability.com on the screen. Contact us at our website and our phone number is also listed. Thanks very much. I appreciate your time and look forward to hearing from you.